Before we begin overhauling the Hydromatic 6T40, here is a service information reminder. Be sure to use the correct fastener in the correct location. Do not use paints, lubricants, or corrosion inhibitors on the fasteners unless specified. These coatings may affect fastener torque or damage the fastener. And always torque fasteners to the specifications called out in service information. With the holding fixture installed on the bench and the transmission secured in the holding fixture, set the lock pin. Remove the torque converter holding strap and install the torque converter lifting handles. To prevent damage to the torque converter housing, tighten the lifting handles with light finger pressure only. Do not over tighten the lifting handles. In order to prevent damage to the clutch lip seal, lift the torque converter straight up. To remove the control valve body assembly, remove the bolts from the control valve body cover and remove the cover. Then remove and discard the control valve body gasket. Remove the control valve body cover wiring connector hole seal and discard. Note, to prevent damage to the internal electrical connections, Support the control solenoid valve assembly when removing the seal. Remove the shift position switch connector, the output speed sensor connector, and the input speed sensor connector. To remove the control solenoid valve assembly, remove the bolts from the control solenoid valve assembly, and then remove the assembly. Next, Remove the control solenoid valve assembly filter plate and discard. Note, take care when removing the filter plate to prevent damage to the retaining tabs. To remove the control valve body assembly, first remove the fluid level control valve and its gasket. Then remove the bolts from the control valve body assembly and remove the assembly and spacer plate. Remove the manual shaft detent spring bolt and the manual shaft detent lever spring assembly. Remove the 1234 clutch fluid passage seal and discard. Remove the low reverse clutch fluid passage seal and discard. To remove the input and output speed sensors, Remove the output speed sensor bolt and assembly. Remove the input speed sensor bolt and assembly. To prevent damage to the retainer, compress the locking tabs on the plug to release it from the case. Remove the input speed sensor assembly seals and discard. To remove the torque converter with fluid pump housing assembly, Remove the bolts from the assembly and remove the assembly. Remove the fluid pump seal assembly. Remove the torque converter housing gasket and discard. To remove the front differential carrier assembly, first remove the front differential carrier bearing assembly, the differential carrier assembly, the differential sun gear to differential housing bearing assembly, and the final drive sun gear. To remove the drive sprocket, driven sprocket, and drive link, First, remove the drive link lube scoop and both of its seals. Then, remove the driven sprocket, drive sprocket, park gear assembly, and drive link at the same time. Note, to ease removal, pull straight up. Remove the driven sprocket bearing assembly. Then, remove the bolts from the front differential carrier baffle and the baffle. To remove the park pawl, remove the park pawl shaft, park pawl spring, and the park pawl itself. 
To remove the internal components, use a J28585 snap ring remover to remove the 1, 2, 3, 4 clutch backing plate retainer ring. Remove the retainer with care to avoid personal injury and damage to the machined surface of the case in the park pawl area. Burrs or raised edges can cause the park pawl to bind and not engage the park pawl gear. Remove the 3-5 reverse and 4-5-6 clutch housing assembly, gear set, low reverse clutch assembly, and low reverse and 1-2-3-4 clutch housing. Then remove the 2-6 clutch plate 2-6 clutch apply plate and the 3-5 reverse and 4-5-6 clutch housing thrust bearing assembly. Use the J28585 snap ring remover to remove the 2-6 clutch spring retainer. Then remove the 2-6 clutch spring followed by the 2-6 clutch piston assembly. Use the universal seal remover and a slide hammer to remove the manual shift shaft pin and discard. Use the DT48550 to remove the manual shaft detent lever hub pin and discard the pin. Remove the manual shaft and the manual shaft detent with shift position switch lever assembly. Then remove the park pawl actuator assembly. Next remove the park pawl actuator guide pin. Remove the park pawl actuator guide assembly and its seal. Discard the seal. Use the J45201 seal remover to remove the manual shift shaft seal. It is not necessary to remove the input shaft support to service the seals. However, it is a good idea to ensure that the bolts are properly torqued. Remove and discard the 3-5 reverse and 4-5-6 clutch fluid seals. Remove the bolts from the input shaft support and the support. Inspect the input shaft support for wear, damage, or porosity. Reinstall the input shaft support and torque the bolts to specification. Place the J46620-3 over the case hub and adjust it so only the bottom seal ring is exposed. Install a new seal ring. Use the J46620-2 seal installer to push each of the new seal rings into the corresponding hub ring grooves. Install the J46620-1 with the large chamfer end down over the fluid seal rings and leave it for at least 60 seconds. To prevent damage to the seals, do not force the chamfer over the seals. Install the J46620-1 seal sizer with the small chamfer end down over the bottom seal ring and leave it for at least 60 seconds. To remove the front wheel drive shaft oil seal, use the J6125-1B slide hammer and the J23129 universal seal remover. Once removed, install the new seal using the J8092 driver handle and the DT47790 seal installer. Inspect the torque converter housing locating pins for proper installation depth of 0.29 inches. The fluid trough check ball for proper installation depth of 0.45 inches. The converter housing sealing surface and the control valve body cover sealing surface. Remove the fill cap and its seal. Inspect the transmission fluid cooler pipe sealing surface. Remove the fluid pressure test plug. Inspect the threads. Install a new plug and torque to specification. Inspect the fluid fill cap sealing surface. Install a new seal and reinstall the cap. Remove the fluid level plug. Inspect the threads. Install a new plug and torque to specification. Inspect the valve body locating pins. Remove the drain plug. 
inspect the threads, install a new plug, and torque to specification. Use solvent to clean the transmission case assembly, the case threads, all threaded holes, and the gasket sealing surfaces. After cleaning, air dry the case. Install the seal on the Park Paul actuator guide assembly. And then install the guard. Install the Park Paul actuator guide pin to a height of 0.38 inches. Install the Park Paul actuator assembly followed by the manual shaft detent with shift position switch lever assembly. Lubricate the manual shaft with automatic transmission fluid and install. Inspect the manual shift shaft seal surface. Install the new seal. Install the manual shaft detent lever hub pin to a height of 0.38 inches. Use the J41229 manual shaft pin installer to install a new pin to the correct height of 0.28 inches to 0.32 inches. Apply a thin coat of automatic transmission fluid to the J47796 seal protector to prevent damage to the piston seal lip during installation. Place the tool and install the 2-6 clutch piston assembly. Install the 2-6 clutch spring and retainer in alignment with the largest gap in the case splines toward the bottom of the case. Use the DT47797 spring installer and the DT48056 spring compressor bridge to seat the 2-6 clutch spring retainer. Apply shop air to the clutch fluid feed hole in the case to verify proper piston operation. 